Hey everyone, Rob Nutter here. Welcome to Destination Pickle. We are at the Chicken and Pickle Grand Prairie location here in Texas and the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We are gonna be hitting some pickle balls today, talking to some staff, trying a signature cocktail or two, and eating some delicious food. Welcome to Destination Pickle. Hey there, welcome to Destination Pickle. I'm Rob Nutter, your host, and we are at the Grand Prairie location of Chicken and Pickle, and I'm standing here with Keith Perleski, the floating general manager, and he's gonna walk us through the property. I'm very excited to have you all here and show you what we're all about. This is such an amazing concept. Um, it just is something that is just blowing up because we give great customer service, we have great staff, we have got great food, and we're the best pickleball destination in the entire country. So obviously a chicken and pickle, pickleball is one of the primary features. So we're here on the court at Grand Prairie and just tell us more about what you have to offer pickleball wise. Well, we've got 11 courts total. We've got uh, five outside, two of which are covered. Our Texas courts and one's a Texas flag. Obviously everything in Texas is bigger here. So um, we have six more indoor courts and it's a destination and it's becoming so much fun for families to come out here and play pickleball. You know, I'm the, the worst pickleball player in the country and I'm next to one of the best pickleball players in the country, but it's still such an engaging sport that everybody here enjoys it, even the little kids. So even though we're at Chicken and Pickle and Pickleball is the main feature, there's plenty more to do for the whole family. Let's go take a look at what else they have to offer. Pickleball is not all that we offer. Right over here, we've got our uh, pickle pong. Uh, the kids are throwing soccer balls inside there. A shuffleboard over there. And then as we walk over here, this is our game yard. Um, we have jump ropes, we have hula hoops, we have Jenga. And it's funny because the kids don't play Jenga. They just use them as kind of like Legos and build stuff around, but it keeps the family happy. And it's just so much fun that people can come out here in the middle, even if it's raining a little bit, they can play it. And then if we walk over here, we have our, what's called our shack bar. And on the weekends, uh, we've got three frozen machines back there, margaritas, green teas, and whatever we feel like making that day. Um, this area is just hopping on the weekends. And um, again, we are being more things to more people. So we've got outside. Now let's head on to the Pickle Dome and see what they have inside. The indoor pickleball course is kind of what Chicken Pickle is known for with the garage door opening, that air conditioning. This is the spot. Right, we've got six indoor courts. And as you can tell, if you look around, every court is full at two o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday. Um, we've got everything from little kids to um, older people like me. Um, so it's really bringing the community get together here to just learn this sport that is just exploding right now. It's bringing happiness to the community. So just saw the Pickle Dome and now we're upstairs on the roof deck of Chicken and Pickle, one of my favorite spots at both Chicken and Pickles that I've been to at this point, Grapevine and Grand Prairie. Tell us more about what happens up here. We are such a different venue. We have so many different opportunities. Um, a giant patio out here. You can sit inside uh, near the bar in the upstairs area. Um, the view here is just amazing. But as we look out here, there's more restaurants coming. Um, there's a Bellagio water show out there. There are so many things that this area brings and we are just the, the, the focal point of that to bring everybody here. So I think we're doing a great job and, and this is just such a fun place to look out and see everything that's going on. All right, so walking inside from the outdoor roof deck, we've got now an indoor upstairs bar area. What else goes on up here? As you can see, we have a private event going on right now. One of our, our stables is the amazing food that my chefs put in to our private events. Um, and as a destination restaurant, we really love bringing people in to uh, larger events like this. Um, our main bar up here is just rocking on the weekends. So really that's it. It's just a great venue and a great space just to hold up, even like a small event like this. Just came down from the upstairs bar area and the roof deck, and now we're in one of my favorite places at Chicken and Pickle, which is the dining area, the food portion. So tell us what we have going on here. 
We have the best barbecue and the best rotisserie chicken in the business. We have a wood-fired rotisserie. Um, I've never had more juicy succulent chicken in my life. It is amazing. This is our main dining room and our main bar right over here. We've got little private alcoves over there and little private alcoves over there for private parties. But um, I'm sure you'll see the menu, but the food is our main focus. Pickleball is really important, but what keeps the people coming back here is the amazing food and the amazing drinks and the amazing service that we give here at Chicken and Pickle. So from the dining room, we're gonna go into uh, more private area, which is the Be Amazing Room shuffleboard, beautiful bar area. Let's check it out. So we're here in the Be Amazing Room, one of my favorite spots at Chicken and Pickle, and it can be rented as a private space. It's a beautiful bar area, shuffleboard, one of my favorite games. Tell us more about this room. A great bar uh, with uh, garage doors that open. So on a nice, beautiful day, we, you're having access to our game yard. Um, again, the two shuffle boards. Um, we have um, uh, foosball over here. And the best part about this is it's it, the couches. It's got a different atmosphere than everything else in the building. And um, so it just, it, it's, you know, it's, it's like being in separate venues in the entire place. Um, so I really love it. And we call it the Be Amazing Room because that's one of our pol uh, one of our mantras is that you know when you're gonna enjoy coming to Chicken and Pickle because we want to be amazing for you. So thanks so much, Keith. Really appreciate you giving us a walk through. All that talk in there about rotisserie chickens got me hungry. So let's uh, <laughs> let's go try some food. We are here for my favorite portion, the food portion. Done this before up in Grapevine with. Director of Culinary in Texas, Kyra Slespin. And we're just gonna go over, like we did last time, the different options we have. Yeah, so just like last time, you guys, we partner with a ton of really cool local growers, producers, and companies to be able to ensure that we give the best quality food to all of our guests as they come in. Uh, so some of the stuff we have for you guys today to try is just featuring our best dressed chicken. We use them for all of our poultry needs. So we've got three different things that we can get using them. Our jumbo smoked wings that we smoke in-house on all of our properties. Our chicken tinga, so a really nice grilled traditional sauce on that, on our tostadas, and our very traditional just rotisserie chicken, star of all of our kitchens. Um, half chicken, you can get a ton of different seasonings for wherever spice level you like. Comes with avocado, grilled citrus, tortilla. Again, we use local providers for that, um, so really awesome as well. Um, we've got some of our grilled broccolini for you today. So again, grilled over the oak wood fire that we use in all of our kitchens and our street corn, again, cooked on those same coals, oak wood, um, topped with all your traditional things of, you know, an elote crema, some hot sauce, queso fresco, all the good stuff. Oh, it's unreal. She knows it every time. Let's go. <laughs> We're starting with dessert because all the food came out together. We've got my favorite vanilla bean ice cream right here. So let's give you guys the triple cookie. So it's a cast iron cookie that we make in house and no better way to serve it than just warm with a scoop of cold vanilla ice cream. It's clearly melting. So let's dig right into it. I mean, dude, look at this thing. Cooked to perfection. Gooey warm center with chocolate chips. God. I thought it couldn't get better from the grapevine dessert. I don't know, it was, it was a biscuit with vanilla bean ice cream on it with like some raspberry puree. It was money, but this is, uh, God, I could put vanilla bean ice cream literally on chicken and be happy with it. So uh, the fact that we have a cookie and a skillet, I'm in. A scale of one to 10, I don't know. I don't want to say 10, but it's a 10. <laughs> one more bite. Mmm. <gasps> Mmm, 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 mmm. People like to talk about breakfast for dinner. I like to talk about dessert for an appetizer. So that's what we did here. Now we're gonna go over to some new food items. Pretty different from what we had in Grapevine. So let's explore. Okay, so had our appetizer, the vanilla bean ice cream on a skillet cookie. Now going to uh, not necessarily what I would probably have for my first order at Chicken and Pickle, but going with the greens, going with broccolini. Broccolini. It's a fun word. Here we go. Whoa, a lot of stuff going on in my mouth. Mm. Much spicier than I thought. Has a serious kick, but also has way more flavor than I thought. Like that was actually good. 
which normally <laughs> I wouldn't say broccolini is necessarily good, but the flavor is wild on this. It's uh, so it goes from like a, a salty, vinegary to a spicy kick pretty quickly, and the spicy kick's still lingering, but it's nice, not like overpowering. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? thinking I love Mexican street corn and I'm gonna crush this. So I always think about this. So this is corn on the cob. So corn that's not on the cob, is it corn off the cob? Is that what you say? Like, like you know, if you'd have individual cornlets, I want corn off the cob. Like, is that what you order? People do this different ways. This is how I do it. I'm gonna get this. You can't just bite it like that. You gotta, you gotta hold it. And then you gotta look for a good bite. And obviously it's where the cheese and the sauce is. Mmm, I got it on my mouth, I know I do. It's really good. The flavor's nice. Good flavor profile. Definitely got some hot sauce. I don't know what kind of hot sauce it is, but um, don't know what kind of cheese it is, don't know what kind of sauce it is. I just know it's delicious. I'm not a, I'm not a chef. I'm just an eater. Also kind of like, I know it's decoration, right? The, the green little three leaf clover, but I'm gonna remove it. I feel like I got more on my cheek. It's a tough, it's a, it's a messy thing, but it's good. It's tough, but it's good. This is a full on rotisserie chicken. It's actually one of the first things I noticed walking in today was they just had the rotisseries just rolling. So this is kind of the staple, comes with a nice tortilla, some avocado, and I think I'm gonna make a little, I'm gonna make a little thing. I'm gonna make a little uh, tortilla sandwich. I don't know how to quite slice open, nope. I'm gonna go full heathen here and just rip chicken off like a, like a grown man. Came apart pretty well. Oh, look, I got a drum here. Uh, I'm gonna audible. I'm not gonna make a tortilla. I'm just gonna eat a drum. Look at this. God, it's just primal. Underrated part of rotisserie chicken. This has really nice flavor compared to like, uh, only other place I eat like rotisserie chickens from like, you know, when they serve me like, the grocery store and you grab one. Like the flavor on the skin of this is money. It's, uh, I don't know what it is, but the spice and the flavor, fantastic. Yeah, the skin, best part of the chicken. Little avocado, little tortilla. Making a sandwich was too hard, so rip it apart, down the hatch. I said the rotisserie was the staple. I was wrong, I was wrong, uh, clearly. We have, for the namesake, we have chicken wings, chicken, and a pickle on a plate. So chicken and pickle. This is the, this is the main event here. We'll call it dessert because you know it's our last, last plate. Started with the vanilla ice cream, now we're onto this. And I think it's underrated. Like there should be a pickle with, it's a perfect compliment to chicken wings, so. Delicious. Look at the size of this guy, it's unreal. I mean, you gotta dip it in the ranch. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out what flavor it is because I know Kyra told us it's not buffalo, not barbecue. It's like a nice, well, it could be barbecue. It's like a sweet tangy, not teriyaki. It's just like a sweet tangy. It's delicious. Honestly, favorite dish has to be the chicken wings because if I'm just like going to a restaurant or going out typically, like, and I want just a meal, I get chicken wings way too often. So um, can't, can't go wrong, especially here, chicken and pickle, namesake, pickle. And the pickle wasn't what I expected either. I was expecting like a normal dill pickle. This isn't like, this isn't out of the jar. I mean, it's probably out of some jar, but it's not out of the jar you're used to seeing. I've only had one wing. I guarantee I have at least five more before I go put pickle too. And not because I'm hungry, but because they taste good. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a wrap on the food. I'm gonna finish eating this up. Put the shoes on, hit the pickleball courts. See you over there. Hey there, Rob Nunnery here at the Grand Prairie destination of chicken and pickle. I'm here with my friend Jay, who I just met and is a lovely player. And Jay's gonna help me demonstrate a third shot drop today. All I'm doing on this third is I'm letting it bounce, I'm letting it drop, and then my grip is, I would say probably a four or five totally. out of 10 grip strength. But I'm letting the ball come, drop down, and I'm trying to hit it the same place every time about knee level. So I'm moving my feet, getting in position, and right about knee level is when I'm hitting it. And as you see, there's not a lot of movement with my wrist or elbow, 
It's just really pushing forward with my shoulder right there. That's really it. Jay, your money over there. You haven't missed yet. Told you we only needed one ball. So here we are. I'm sitting down with Austin Becker. He's the pickleball manager here at Grand Prairie Chicken and Pickle. And just wanted to dive into you and your background a little bit. What brought you to Chicken and Pickle and how long have you been here now? Uh, so come from a, a sports background. Um, so was looking to stay in sports and had this opportunity. Um, so jumped on it as soon as I could. Uh, as soon as I started working here, started playing as well. And just got me hooked even more. So on the courts, any chance I can, I'm loving it. Love it. When did you when did you start at Chicken and Pickle? Uh, so in October, still yeah. relatively new. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've got, got my feet settled now and yeah. ready to, to move forward. And were you in the Dallas area before doing something else? Or were you did you move from out of? I moved from out of town. So I was okay. down in Austin uh, yeah. working with a professional rugby team and then uh, moved up in October and started this at the same time. Very cool. So what, just generally speaking, because you said you're new to pickleball as of October. So with Chicken and Pickle, what, what attracted you to the role? The big thing was community. Um, how uh, involved Chicken and Pickle is within the community, yeah. whether it's you know paying for employees to spend four days out volunteering yeah. or all the charity tournaments that we run, um, all the charity give back nights as well. It's just yeah. very community oriented, which was a, a big draw for me. Yeah, it's very cool. So being pretty interesting transition, right? Being working with a professional rugby team, what were you doing with them? Uh, so I was the team manager. So all the kind of behind the scenes logistics, yeah. making sure the boys were where they needed to be, when they yeah. needed to be there, that type of stuff, the dirty work. The dirty work, yeah. yeah. The, the, the stuff that doesn't get appreciated, right? Definitely. So yeah, so I guess being up here in Dallas now in Grand Prairie, what, you know, what excited you most about, outside of the community involvement, what excited you most about being involved in pickleball and also chicken and pickle? Yeah, uh, just the growth, um, right? One of those sports where it's taking off super fast. Um, I think it was like around 5 million players in uh, 21 and now we're up to like 36 million. Uh, so just that growth and being able to be a part of something like that was a big draw as well. Yeah, no, I love it. And what's, you know, obviously you're the pickleball manager here. Where do you see this location going in terms of pickleball? Like what are your goals in terms of programming? What do you have going on? Yeah, um, so really looking forward to hosting uh, bigger tournaments. Um, so we have the NPL, which is coming up mm -hmm. um, in the summer that we're going to host and then hoping to get some more next gen tournaments, uh, which we've done before. Yep. And then maybe eventually down the line we might not have the courts but between the two locations we can maybe get the PPA in here which would be which would be a good time. No that'd be great I, and I just I always wonder why there aren't more tour stops at Chicken and Pickles because it's such a perfect venue in terms of having the food and beverage and everything else and for, for those that don't know NPL is is the new senior pro league correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah so you'll have that you'll have the APP next gen which is basically the up-and-coming pros that are I don't know what the age limit is but but very cool because I know Chicken and Pickle is the main stop for all the next gen. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That and the MPL. So we'll host um, all of our locations. We'll have an MPL stop as Epic. well. So yeah. So really cool in terms of getting involved in the tournament scene. Um, yeah. No. And so just really appreciate you taking the time. And I think we're gonna I think we're gonna play a little pickle. So of course, I yeah. want to see how good you are since October. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Just taking calls mid game. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> one one. Nice. Got him. <laughs> There's gonna be a bruise on that. She better check that. Woo. Nice, good volley. Good shot, Jay. <laughs> that was a good shot, too. Woo, that's my fault. I like that backhand. Thank you. <laughs> oh, bring the heat. They wanted it. They wanted He's it. angry. <laughs> Should we do three on two? <laughs> Get him. Cut that. There's no mistakes <laughs> on camera. And then the lob, what is this? 
Oh, good shot, Jay. Oh, sorry, 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 Jay. <laughs> Okay, bonus interview, Destination Pickleball with the legendary Brooke Cahoot. Welcome. Thank you, I'm excited. So here today in Grand Prairie at the Chicken and Pickle, just give us a little background in terms of how did you get involved with Chicken and Pickle and what do you do here? So my boss at my last job took the area director position here and reached out and said, hey, this is fantastic, it's a lot of fun. I think you really enjoy it. My wife and I came one weekend like, holy cow, this is amazing. And a month later, I was starting my first day. It's just, it's been a whirlwind ever since. The kids, and it just, like I said, it's just crazy. Saturday, we came in on a Saturday and we barely found a seat and people were having fun and laughing and people come here to have a good time. And we just have to keep that level. I mean, it's hard to really upset somebody when they come in because they want to and they're looking for a great time, so. Yeah, it's gotta be a little unique going from like the TJ Friday's Cheddar's type restaurant to a place like Chicken and Pickle that has so much going on outside oh, yeah. of just food and beverage. What really attracted you to Chicken and Pickle as a company? The newness, being able to help grow and build a company. One of the things was we didn't have a lot of systems in place when I started and wanted to be a part of that and to see how we can implement those into the growth of the company. And that was the biggest thing, it's just, we're the sixth store. What do you find unique about this chicken and pickle versus, you know, obviously you have, you know, there are six locations, they're growing like crazy. Yes. New locations popping up all over. Um, soon to be three in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. What do you guys pride yourself in at this Grand Prairie location? We do more walk-up business than anybody else. On a Saturday night, we'll do $20,000 just through the cashier line. Whereas Grapevine's doing mostly events. They're, 80% it seems like their sales are events, so it's guaranteed. But we have to make sure we're given the best experience for people to come back, because they're bringing their families. We are much more family friendly, or family focused, I guess, than the other chicken and pickles right now. I think Allen will be more of the events driven, but we're definitely a walk-in, people just coming in to find out what we are. Yeah, just the, just the size and the scale of yeah. it. Like you said, 75,000 square feet. It's not like you have a couple pickleball courts and a little restaurant. I mean, you have a beautiful event space, you have different areas, you have games. Yeah, what's a, what's a typical weekend look like here? Uh, Saturday is just crazy open and close. We have a special brunch menu on Saturdays, burritos and breakfast stuff. But then it's kids running, baseball teams coming in, softball teams. Last week we had a big basketball tournament in the area, so we had basketball teams everywhere and it's it's nonstop. We were we had a line for the cashier out the door and around the building until 10:30, and it was like that when I got here at two. So yeah, it's just and it's crazy like that on Sundays. We do the same thing on Sundays. What better way to wrap the day than behind the bar here at Chicken and Pickle in Grand Prairie? I am with the lead bartender here, Arlette Reyes, and she is gonna walk us through the signature cocktail. Alrighty, we're gonna be making the sparkling strawberry lemonade here at CNP Grand Prairie. It has deep eddy lemon and then our fresh Victor strawberry lemon. It also has lemonade and topped with soda. Here we go. Light, refreshing, summery, just like Arlette said. <laughs> five out of five, 10 out of 10. ten. Nobody does five out of five, it's always 10 out of 10. Oh. 100 out of 100, let's go big scale. <laughs> no, it's money, it's Thank good. You. Thank you, Arlette, yeah, appreciate no it. Problem. Thank you. It's really good, it's really good. Grand Prairie Chicken and Pickle, that's a wrap. Had a beautiful day out here today, ate some delicious food, had a signature cocktail or two, met some great people. If you're ever in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, make your way to Chicken and Pickle Grand Prairie. As always, I'm Rob Nunnery. Thank you for watching Destination Pickle.